Microscopes make ordinary things look truly extraordinary in an extreme close-up, as this video will show. I mean, the first thing on our list is gonna flip your brain like a burger on a barbecue. You will never view going to the beach the same way again. I'm Mike with List25, and prepare to get up close and personal as I explore 25 astonishing things you can only see under a microscope. So that beach thing that I was talking about, it's sand, specifically a grain of sand. Beaches are made up of millions of grains of sand, even small ones. Looking at a grain of sand close up is literally an eye opener. You see, sand isn't all the same, although it is coarse, rough, and gets sort of rare, but th that's another story. It has different ingredients that go into its makeup, from hard quartz to bits of volcano. You can even see organic matter in grains of sand. Microorganisms and shell fragments have been seen when you place this seemingly ordinary stuff under a microscope. Here's a bonus fact. I mentioned earlier that there are tons of grains of sand on the average beach. With all that in mind, how many grains do you think there are in all the beaches on Earth? It's tough to say. One amazing estimate states that there are approximately 20 times as many grains as there are stars in the observable universe. Let's go from a cosmic location to a spaced out scene for our next story. We all know what people do with cannabis leaves, but do they ever take the time to wonder what's on the surface of a leaf like this? Probably not, because they're probably pretty stoned. However, cannabis leaves have been placed under a microscope and the results are incredible. I mean, check this out. That is one surprisingly hairy plant right there. These hairs are trichomes, named after the Greek word for hair growth, trichoma. What do these growths do? Well, one thing they do is help protect the plant against potentially harmful UV rays through compounds called cannabinoids, which are secreted by the trichomes. Cannabis leaves also breathe through tiny pores called stomata on the underside. <laughs> Far out, man. Cannabis users think they can see the world in a whole different way, but that's nothing compared to the humble wasp. If you're one of those people that flinches at the sight of a wasp, then you might want to chill out. A wasp under a microscope is a thing of beauty, as this striking image of an ocelli on a yellow jacket shows. The word ocelli comes from the Latin word oculus, or little eye, but just because it looks like an eye, that doesn't mean it's what the insect relies on to see with. These yellow jacket ocelli found between the wasp's compound eyes are more designed as light detectors and for navigation. The wasp also uses them as a warning system. Now I spy with my little eye something beginning with S. Blink, and you might miss a brine shrimp which has an average size of up to 0.5 inches. That would be a shame due to the sheer level of detail you can see when it goes under a microscope. For example, alongside its compound eyes or eyes containing lots of little lenses, you have the median eye in the middle. This is crucial when the shrimp is growing from baby to adulthood because it can't see out of anything else yet. After it's grown, the shrimp relies on its compound eyes, of which there are two. You can't miss those because they're waving around on stalks. From creepy things that see to crawly things that smell. For many people, palm weevils aren't something they want to think about in too much detail. But if you can stomach the ick factor, there's a lot of fascinating stuff to take in. The weevil's nose or rostrum is a case in point. It not only doubles as a really long mouth, it also acts as a tool to dig with. Plus, it fulfills a range of other functions like transporting eggs. Palm weevils get their name from the fact that they live inside palm trees. Though, if you're ever eating a coconut, you might want to watch out for the red palm weevil, which is a well-known pest of that juicy and delicious food item. After all these bugs, let's chill out and listen to some music, shall we? Vinyl has made a big comeback in recent times. However, there is more to playing a vinyl record than just sticking a needle in a groove. Close-up analysis of these grooves reveals a kind of miniature landscape. It might be surprising to you that they aren't just simple indentations in the record's surface. After all, that's how they look to the naked eye. Why do the grooves look like this? It's so the needle of your record player can read the ups and downs of the music you're listening to. The grooves have left and right sections reflecting the left and right sound sources you need for stereo. Plus, the shape of the grooves are designed to be a solid, readable version of the music's sound waves. Without them, you wouldn't be able to hear your favorite track at all. From needles to blades for an important part of a daily routine, surely shaving cream is just a big white blob, right? Wrong. Even shaving cream under a microscope is a wild visual ride. Check it out to see how different it looks up close. That doesn't look anything like shaving cream. It's more like an image from space. It turns out you need a combination of things in order to keep that household item nice and blobby. One thing that's noticeable about shaving cream up close are all those air bubbles. Without the air, you wouldn't be able to apply the cream evenly. 
Meanwhile, the compound glycerin is vital for lubrication. <laughs> you wouldn't want to run a blade down your neck without it being fully lubricated, right? And what snacks do microscopes love the best? If you've ever seen the Tron movies, you might find this microscopic view a little familiar. In fact, the digital world of Tron wouldn't exist without what we're seeing here, namely a microchip. The transistors or electrical switches, plus the different connections needed to help a machine process vast amounts of data from a simple yet highly detailed image. Here's a quick bonus fact. Did you know that the very first microchip was patented way back in 1959? It was first unveiled by electrical engineers Jack Kilby and physicist Robert Noyce, who each produced their own chip. A fascinating detail about Kilby is that he worked at Texas Instruments, who produced the handheld calculator, plus the iconic Speak and Spell children's toy. The inventors of the microchip planted seeds that changed the world. But now on a simpler plant-based note, lotus flowers are pretty to the naked eye, and they're also gorgeous under a microscope. The petals growing inside are a thing of beauty in themselves, but the wax-coated leaves that surround the flower are well worth a deep dive. The wax on these help protect the plant, something you can observe through the effect this coating has on water. Despite looking delicate, the lotus flower is tough on the outside, making any water form into a ball shape if it lands on the outer leaves. Working in the garden makes you thirsty, so you may want to grab a drink. You probably know about citric acid through soft drinks, where they boost flavor and help create carbon dioxide hence making your drink nice and fizzy. Put it under a microscope, however, and you see a whole new world of acidic goodness. Citric acid has a crystalline structure, meaning it looks truly magical when magnified. The pointed crystals look exceptionally stunning when you use polarized light to study them with. Polarized light is essentially a more organized form of light. Another great thing about viewing citric acid with a microscope is that it reveals the ordered nature of this useful ingredient, something that isn't noticeable without the extreme magnification. If you think salt is boring, then you clearly haven't thought about the subject in depth. Yeah, believe it or not, this view you're looking at is salt. The crystals look like a bunch of crazy dice from some fantasy movie. What's also interesting is how the sodium chloride crystals are in the shape of a cube. I would have thought the crystals would be round, but no. They have that particular shape because of the salt's tightly packed structure. Salt can also take on what's called a hopper shape, which is noticeably more uneven. Now, salt is good in moderation, so you should get it in your guts. Roundworms, also known as nematodes, are never going to be the nicest thing to look at up close. For starters, they can make a home in your digestive system, so you're more likely to feel the after effects of them being there rather than seeing them physically. However, if you were curious enough to take a look, you would see the inner workings of those tiny creepy crawlies, because nematodes have a habit of being translucent. They really leave nothing to the imagination. Their insides feature such delightful things as a mouth-to-anus digestive system, perfect for when they're eating your intestines, I guess. Enough about mini-monsters, let's check out some magnificent metals. Metal may appear pretty shiny and uniform, but it's worth remembering that this is only what's visible to the naked eye. Put something like tarnished copper under a glare of a microscope and you'll be able to experience the damage that's done to the surface of this metal in excruciating detail. The copper gets its tarnish from a chemical reaction to air and moisture that causes corrosion on the surface. This is called oxidation. You can tell what it is thanks to its dull brown and green coloring, which shows the presence of copper oxide and copper carbonate. The exposure to air and moisture can't really be avoided, it's just part of nature. The microscope reveals the full extent of the impact tarnishing can have, and it isn't pretty. Tarnishing can also affect other metals such as brass. Our next story takes us from the outer surface of metal back inside the human body. Cholesterol is bad for you. Though having said that, there is an upside that you haven't seen yet. The reason you haven't seen it is because, well, you need a microscope in order to find it. Some have compared the microscopic view of cholesterol crystals up close to stained glass due to the colors that are produced when you study the crystals using polarized light. Cholesterol crystals are also surprisingly organized in terms of how they're shaped. The crystals are rectangular and have notches, making some views of them look almost like blueprints or architectural diagrams. A truly wondrous and fascinating sight. Speaking of brilliant designs, they don't come more fascinating than a spider's web. A spider's web can be brushed aside very easily, which makes it easy to forget one fact. The fact is that the web a spider creates is a super strong structure and a miracle of natural engineering. We destroy it so quickly because, well, we're so much bigger. If we shrunk down to spider size, there's no way we'd be escaping from that sticky web. A highly detailed picture is created when we look at the strands of the web under a microscope. 
The arrangement of protein molecules inside each strand, which is produced from within the arachnid itself, ensures that the web is not only tough, but flexible. Those strands appear surprisingly thick when viewed at a microscopic level. And apologies to any arachnophobes out there. Let's check out this next fact that is nice and juicy. Tomatoes are so bright, colorful, and juicy that the leaves of the plant it grows from are frequently overlooked. Get them viewed in a super close-up, however, and you get to see how things go down in Tomato Town. You have the veins transporting water and nutrients in the same way that human veins move precious blood around the body. You can also see the stomata, which is basically the leaf's filtration system processing the air and using the carbon dioxide it extracts for photosynthesis. Even more incredible than that are the inner workings of the leaf, where the mesophyll cell network lies. Think of the mesophyll network as a photosynthesis factory with chloroplasts turning light into chemicals. I'm sorry, wait, what's that fluttering around my tomato plant? Butterflies feature a range of pretty patterns on their wings. However, when you go deeper through the lens of a microscope, you begin to appreciate just how intricate these seemingly delicate little insects are. Here's a fact that's gonna blow your mind. Did you know butterflies have scales? Yes, they have overlapping scales that you can see under a microscope, but also with the naked eye. This happens when you handle a butterfly that leaves dusty traces on your hands. Don't worry, it isn't part of the butterfly's coloring or even butterfly poop. What you're seeing is residue from the scales of the butterfly. The scales are designed to tail tub in the beautiful creature to flutter around where it needs to. Float like a butterfly, sting like a... Oh, you know the next part. Whoa, wh what is this I'm looking at here? Is this a video about the beauty of microscopes or a scene from Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Actually, this is the stinger of a bee, which is probably not a reassuring thought. The idea of being stung by a bee is freaky enough without seeing the barb it's going to be doing it with. It's a fascinating, if not grim, part of the insect's anatomy, with those jagged edges designed to jab in and lock onto your skin. The venom is passed into your system, and you're in for one long and painful ride. The good news is that it would take a lot of stings for the bee attack to be fatal, and bees tend to die after just one. That hair really does get everywhere, as our next story shows. I have a mind-boggling fact that you may not have known before. The fact is that your lungs have their own hair. Or rather, they have their own super small hair-like attachments called cilia. The cilia, which of course can be viewed under a microscope, acts as a sweeper, moving to forcibly eject stuff that might be causing any breathing difficulties. Mucus is an obvious substance to expel, and your cilia can also remove dust. While some have compared their appearance to little fingers, the word cilia comes from the Latin word cilium, or hair slash eyelash. The subject of eyelashes is covered in our next story, though it's actually the eyelashes themselves that are covered. Now. I hate to break it to you, but you probably have tiny parasites crawling around on your eyelashes. This sounds majorly icky, however, you should remember that it's a pretty common thing to have. These mites, known as demodex mites, shouldn't harm you, so long as there aren't too many of them. One way of literally keeping an eye on demodex mites is to look at them under a microscope. They can be properly assessed. They are segmented and see-through, meaning they aren't the easiest things to spot. Their microscopic size enables them to live in places as cramped as your hair follicles, plus your sebaceous glands, which lubricate your skin with natural oil. There's no need to be ashamed of skin mites because, well, everybody has them. We're turning green now for a deep dive into lichen. We're turning green now for a deep dive into lichen. Lichen is that green stuff that grows on rocks, right? Yes, it is. There's more to it than that. There's a lot going on with lichen, and you have to study it under a microscope to get the full picture. Lichen not only has its own food source, generated through photosynthesis, but it also has its very own construction team that makes sure it keeps on growing. Let's take a closer look at what I just described. The microscope shows us these two important elements in perfect detail. We have the photosynthetic algae and a bacteria called cyanobacteria, which the lichen relies on for photosynthesis. We also have the fungi that nurtures and protects the lichen as it spreads out, i.e. the construction crew. I'm liking what this microscope is doing with lichen. Something else that grows is plaque on our teeth, which we tackle with toothpaste. Here's a fact that'll make your mouth hang open. There are tiny beads inside your toothpaste. Not all toothpastes have them, however, microbeads used to be a staple part of your mouth hygiene routine. We now know that using plastic in this way is not great for our health nor the environment, so it's become less of a thing in recent times. The spherical beads can be viewed in detail when you get a microscope lens trained on them, which begs the question, what do they actually do? Well, they were intended to aid with the scrubbing process, something that continues today, only the beads are biodegradable. 
Now, microplastics get everywhere. In fact, you'll probably see them in sea creatures such as clams. We eat clams, but how hygienic are they? Well, it may comfort you to hear that they have their own internal siphoning system. When looked at under a microscope, you can see how strange and intriguing this is. The clam essentially inhales and exhales using the siphons. There's an in-current siphon that inhales the water, oxygen and algae needed for its survival, and there's the ex-current siphon, which exhales, and when it does so, it expels carbon dioxide and anything nasty it can do without. Unfortunately, you still have to clean clams because one of the things they can tolerate inside them is, well, mud, grit, and sand. Here's another life form that shows a whole new side to itself close up. Beetle shells are another one of those natural features that appear simple and straightforward, until you get them under a microscope. Far from being a smooth, hard surface, the exact level of detail you'll find on the beetle shell is astonishing. The shell, or exoskeleton, is made of something called chitin. What's that? Well, chitin is a polymer that not only makes the shell strong, but also flexible. It has grooves and pores you simply couldn't see without a microscopic lens. In addition to this fascinating sight, there are colorings and quirky little growths that are actually visible to the naked eye. Whew, is it me? Or is it getting cold in here? Whew. We now arrive at what is arguably the goat of stuff that looks incredible under a microscope, namely snowflakes. The really fascinating thing about them is that they're both symmetrical and uniform, but also varied and diverse from flake to flake. You've probably heard the old expression that no two are the same. This pretty much guarantees a visual feast every time you look at one. Its precise hexagonal shape is only the beginning of an amazing journey into all the different things a snowflake can contain. These include plates, spokes, and columns. We can't rule out the possibility that there are identical snowflakes out there. However, I am willing to bet that you won't find a matching pair anytime soon. Well, it's time to leave the world of microscopic madness and head back to full-size reality. This video really goes to show that size isn't everything. But before I head off, I have a question for you. The world's smallest sculpture measures 0.02517 millimeters by 0.02184 millimeters, but what is it a sculpture of? Is it A, Spider-Man, B, a microscope, C, the Eiffel Tower, or D, a piece of Lego? Leave your answers in the comments below. Science is incredible enough in normal size. If you wanna see more, our video on 100, yes, count them, 100 mind-blowing scientific facts is available to watch right here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button, especially if you find yourself returning to our channel, and tap that notification bell so you stay up to date on all our new and future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you again next time.